In this video, I'll be working on inverse kinematics on my robot dog project, which will help my robot move in a desired position based off my joystick values. Furthermore, inverse kinematics will help the robot walk dynamically, and it will also allow it to bite people. After designing them, there's more. <laughs> I've already assembled this before just to make sure everything was right, and it was, and I'm not gonna lie guys, I snapped a couple of things while assembling it, that's one of them, I also had to redesign a piece and reprint it into a new one, and then I snapped it by dropping it, so I heated up the rest of it just to fuse the pieces together. And this is the old version, and I just fused it together here, here, and here. So it doesn't really matter because it acts the same way as this one, which is quite nice. Five more minutes of yapping. No thank you. Let's just get to the assembly.
This is the circuitry. Instead of having a 10 minute video of complete breakdown of components, I think I'll just sum this up. I have the NRF24, which is responsible for communications between the robot and my controller. I have those four sectors of servo outputs and they pretty much just feed the rotational angle to the servo and also feed the power to it. Then I have the battery connector to be specific, the XT60. I've designed and printed it and it only cost me 15 minutes of my life and two pennies. If you're worried about the safety, not to worry. There's no stored charge in the circuit, so unwanted shorts are not gonna happen. Plus, it fits perfectly to the battery, therefore making it safe. And then we have that one switch right there. You could see that, which is right over there. And that is responsible for just turning off and turning on the entire robot. And then we have the Arduino Mega, which is the brains of the operation. All right, now that the robot's fully assembled, I cannot go on to programming it. To get started, I first have to create a transmitter and receiver. I will use a couple of sources to help me, and I will be putting them in the description if you are interested. First of all, I wanted to make my controller and receiver work, which would allow me to work on the rest of my code without having to worry about the NRF24 miscommunicating data. After success with the transceivers, I began working on the inverse kinematics of my robot. First, I would begin working on the Z-axis, which would mean the two servos, the knee angle and the femur servo, would work together to accomplish up and down movement. The way I would solve this problem is by finding the angle of the knee and the femur servo by creating a triangle from the values I already have, such as the length of the femur, tibia, and the Z value from the joystick. Having the three sides of a triangle would allow me to use the SSS formula to find my angles. After translating the mathematical formulas and putting them into the code, I was able to get the robot dog to move up and down which I'll show now. After solving the z-axis, I move on to the x-axis, which translates to back and forth motion. This piece of math is simple because it only needs two lines of code to solve it. The highlighted piece of code is the two lines that are responsible for the forward and back movements. The theta is converted to degrees and added to the femur servo and the Z2 is the output Z axis which is fed into the up and down calculations. Two simple lines of code allow my robot dog to move along the x-axis, as shown here. After solving the X and Z axis, I can move on to the Y axis. It will be responsible for moving the robot's body parallel to the ground. I will need to find the first angle given from the joystick inputs, then the hypotenuse which will help find the second angle and the Z out, which will be fed into the two lines of code I did previously, and the first and second angle will sum up to be put into the shoulder servo making the robot move side to side. That's the first angle. This is our hypotenuse. This is the Z out. 
and this is the second angle that will be added and converted to degrees. Alright, after uploading the code I realized it gave me this issue where the body tilts, but that's not supposed to be happening, it's supposed to be moving parallel to the ground. But not to worry, I find the issue and describe it in the next clip. As I draw out the design, you can see how the bottom line, which is the X input is 2.35, just like the shoulder constant, but only when it is in an upright position. But when it leans to one side, you can see how one side gets longer and the other gets shorter. To fix my problem, all I had to do was invert one side's value by multiplying negative 1 to the X and adding it to the shoulder constant. And for the other side, all I had to do was add the shoulder constant to the x value. But that wasn't the end of the problem. Since I inverted one leg, that would mean the shoulder angle would invert two. Zero would become 180 and 180 would become zero. To counteract the inverted angle, all I had to do was subtract the inverted angle from 180 and I would get... So now that the robot has inverse kinematics, the next step will be walking. Now I have an idea on how I could do this. I would be using sort of an oscillation and interpolating the joystick values into it, which would make a walking sequence. All this will be done in the next video, so I'll see you then.